You are watching No Filter with Debbie. I'm Debbie Schlossel, and these are my views and opinions. Welcome to No Filter with Debbie. I'm Debbie Schlossel, and you know what's driving me crazy? What's driving me crazy is that this serial killing by Democrat, mostly far left liberal politicians, serial killing of businesses, serial killing of jobs, continues, as does their hypocrisy. So I want you to take a look at this tweet from Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti. Look, well, look at this tweet. He, do we have that tweet? All right. So. Eric Garcetti is telling Los Angeles, Los Angelinos, there it is. During this critical time in the pandemic, we all need to assume anyone we come into contact with has COVID-19. You have to go out, make sure to keep your mask on the whole time, maintain physical distance, avoid touching the front of the mask and wash your hands. All right, so he sent that out today, this morning, in fact, at 10.52 a.m. California time. Now, look at him at the Black Lives Matter march. Look at this picture that we have. Do we have that picture? All right. Where's the mask? Where's the social distancing? Where is anything? I mean, he's doing this, but L.A. restaurants and bars are completely shut down. And by the way, he is one of the people who enforced no outdoor dining before he imposed a huge lockdown on the whole Los Angeles so that basically nothing is open. But before that, he's the one that helped shut down and urged the shutdown of outdoor dining based on zero science. So it's funny that he didn't say anything about that in his tweet, as f including, by the way, that if you wear your mask outdoors, that's not going to do anything. Outdoors, there is a breeze, there's air, it circulates. It's not going to do anything if you wear your mask outside. It's pointless. And, of course, he's still giving out this advice. So he's doing this, and I want you to take a look at, and he is only the head of Los Angeles. He's not the governor of California. But as we all know, Gavin Newsom, the governor of California, is the same sort of hypocrite. We all saw him at the fancy schmancy restaurant, French Laundry, where he went to a birthday party. There was no social distancing, no mask wearing, and they were indoor dining. So I want you to take a look at some videos that we have of the owner of a restaurant called Nick the Greek. This is in Ventura, California. His name is Anton Von Happen or Von Hoppen. Take a look at this. I followed the rules. I continue to follow the rules, and you guys still, time after time, are giving me citations, you're telling me I have to close my business. You're not what about my employees? You're not following the rules. I am following the rules. My tables are inside. Just because the health department has a whole process to go through that takes however long that takes, I have to close my business for that time? Who's gonna, are you going to pay my rent? You are you going to pay my rent? You chose to make those I chose to protest by putting my tables outside and I reiterate again, I never served one single person outside. I did all take out food and delivery to what exactly I was supposed to be doing. That's exactly what I did. I did not break any, and there's no even a law, I did not break any rule. There, there is a law that you're breaking right now by operating without a permit. I, because you guys put this closure on my restaurant. Right. You, so you you guys yourselves are creating your own rule and you're giving my citation for your own rule that's created. It's not by law that you cannot sit outside and eat. That's not law, that's what the order that was given. Okay. So you cannot give me a closure citation based on that. It's already been ordered. I'm not issuing a closure. I'm saying you, are you, what do you mean issuing a closure? You guys close me. You guys ask me to close me. I'm not issuing the citation, the, the closure. The, the restaurant is already closed. The permit has been suspended. However, your refusal to close warrants a Because what am I going to do if I close? Are you going to pay my rent? No, no. All we need okay, to do so if you're not going to pay my rent, I'm not closing. We need to reopen. Because you're not going to pay my I told you already. We could have reopened today. We could be open right now. No, However, we should be a citation instead of telling me I can open. Yeah, well, we've, we've missed those steps. The steps that you need to take to make sure that you 
can open your business. You could have reopened already. Reopen today. You could have reopened How? already. How? The list steps are listed in the report that was Which I did. Right. I called the guy. The guy I spoke to on the phone with the supervisor because he made a mistake. That was on me. He made a mistake. I reported on my phone what he said. Yes, he did. He told me if I put it in writing to him on an email that I will follow the rules and I will not put my tables for outside down. So this is Anton at Nick the Greek. I'm the owner of Nick the Greek and uh, the health department came by and has asked me to put all my tables inside. Otherwise they would have closed my business. I just did put all my tables inside and now they're saying they're still gonna close my business because I had tables outside today. So I don't know how to fight this, but I'm gonna try to figure out a way how to fight this. Um, I don't know what to do. We'll see what happens, but this is, this is the support that you get from the health department and the government these days. We're already under so much stress and pressure to try and keep ourselves afloat and open. And even though we're complying now by putting all our chairs and tables inside, they're still doing this. Look at this. This is how ridiculous everything has become. If anybody can help me, please help me. So this is what's going on to restaurants all over the country. And we saw this the other day. We talked about this on the show, how the speakeasy that is owned by our friend and my fellow Beck co-host, State Representative Rick Becker, that his speakeasy was raided by the police for being open past 10 p.m., because we all know that COVID only visits between 10 p.m. and 4 a.m. in North Dakota, according to the scientist and the medical expert, Douglas Burgum. It's just absurd what they are doing in this country. You know, we had a Boston Tea Party because we were tired of the British treating us the same way this restaurant owner and Rick Becker and many others have been treated by the British. We were tired of it. We were tired of the taxation without representation. And this is the same kind of thing. This is not fair democratic elected officials enacting legislation. This is not that. These people are issuing uh, orders. This is government by fiat. There's no vote on it. Although in the case of LA County, there was that vote. And we told you how the woman that broke the vote that made the broke the tie her she was an LA County Commissioner she went and outdoor dined in Santa Monica after breaking the tie to outlaw law outdoor dining so this is going on all over the country we're going to talk about an example in Michigan in a little bit this is outrageous we have to rise up today maybe it's only bars and restaurants in certain states although in places like michigan and minnesota it's concert halls it's comedy clubs it's all kind of stuff like that this it has to stop we have to get our freedoms back we have to we have to rise up and again i am not as i've said on previous shows encouraging riots or violence that's what black lives matter does that's what antifa does that is what liberals do but we have to rise up. There should be mass protests in the streets, not just the few thousand people, which, which was a large showing that you saw for Trump rallies. We just need to see Americans of all per political persuasions. If you're on the left, you should fear that you are not going to have restaurants and bars left when and if we ever come out of this. And I'm not so sure we will. I kind of feel like the government wants us to stay in this forever. These little government officials around the country, they have a taste of power. And as Alexis de Tocqueville said, absolute power corrupts absolutely. And you saw what happened to that guy, Anton Van Hoppen. You saw that in the video. He had four different health department officials coming to basically be the Gestapo and shut him down. They shut his restaurant down. He served takeout, and that apparently deserved a write-up. He had tables outside, and so that deserved a write-up, even though nobody ate outside. He moved the tables inside. You saw in the video, they were all stacked up in both videos. That's still not good enough. This is Kafkaesque, and if you don't know what Kafkaesque is, look up Kafka. It's like basically the worst-case scenario of damned if you do, damned if you don't. You're powerless from these crazy, stupid, ridiculous powers that be. Watch the movie Brazil. 
with Robert De Niro. That's an example of what goes on with this. This is outrageous. All right, when we come back, I am going to tell you about this Michigan restaurant owner and what Fargo is doing to try and keep some of these bars and restaurants alive. That and more after these messages on No Filter with Debbie on back. Capital City Restaurant Supply is your one-stop shop for quality restaurant products for the large to small kitchens. Commercial grade restaurant and bar supplies, limb game processing equipment, refrigeration, dinnerware, and smallware. We sell everything including the kitchen sink from trusted manufacturers for the chef and all of us. Open to the public since 1971, we are veteran owned and North Dakota proud. Let us take care of your restaurant and home kitchen needs today by visiting us at 1414 Interstate Loop in Bismarck or on the web at CapitalCityRestaurantSupply.com. Hi, I'm Dennis Haugen, along with my sons Andy and Mike, and we're showing our support for wind energy in North Dakota. Wind energy has provided farmers like us with a steady stream of income that's not tied to the weather, like crops and cattle are. Another bonus is that wind farm owners are required to maintain the roads leading up to the turbines. Because of that, oftentimes these roads are the best in the county. Wind energy is good for landowners, it's good for the land, it's good for our economy, and it's good for North Dakota. For the greatest selection and full menu offering, it's the Four Season Restaurant and Ice Cream Parlor in Garrison. Succulent sandwiches, big breakfast served all day, and delicious desserts. Easy access in and out for campers and RVs. The Four Season Restaurant at the top of Main Street, Garrison. Are you a thrill seeker, sightseer, or day tripper? The Ford Bronco Sport SUV is built for you. Four Bears Casino is giving away a 2021 Ford Bronco Sport loaded with a ton of interior space, safari-style roof, smooth suspension for any terrain, and easy-to-clean surfaces. Qualify now just by playing your favorite slots at Four Bears Casino. Double points on Sundays. Also get in on Super Senior Wednesdays, slot turning Thursdays, and hot seats on Wednesdays and Thursdays. Spin into Four Bears Casino and Lodge for chances to win. things in life are hard. That's why banking shouldn't be. Cornerstone Bank. Welcome back to No Filter with Debbie on Beck. So before the break, you saw the videos of the restaurant owner in Ventura, California. But this is going on all over the country. We talked about what happened with Rick Becker at the Speakeasy, his bar. And the police came to visit him because apparently he was violating the Fuhrer Burgum's order. And don't send mail, all right? My grandparents were Holocaust survivors. My mom was born in Bergen-Belsen. Don't send mail. I don't like when governments take power like this. You know what? That's what happened in Germany. Now, I'm not saying that they're going to round up the Jews and gays and put them in the camps or gas them, all right? So don't send mail. But I am telling you this, that they grabbed power little by little in Europe, in Nazi Germany, and then the rest of Europe. That's how these kinds of things happen. The British did this, as I said before the break. We have to rise up and reclaim our freedoms. Again, I am not advocating any kind of violence or anything illegal, although we could see that Black Lives Matter did that and nobody cared. Nobody batted an eyelash. It's only conservatives and right-wingers and people who are committed to freedom that we are neo-Nazis or something of that nature when we stand up for freedom. 
when we exercise our constitutionally given and God-given right. So that was California. We talked about North Dakota. And we're going to talk about what Fargo is doing about that, which is something. But I want to tell you about this Michigan restaurant owner. So as you may know, Gretchen Whitmer, the governor of Michigan, has among the most draconian measures in the nation on restaurants, bars, and other establishments. But as I told you, Governor Burgum is starting to resemble more her than he is Republican governors. And this is kind of scary because he is killing restaurants and hotels in North Dakota. They are already struggling to survive anyway, and he is putting the final nail in their coffins with his order. And the same thing is happening in Michigan. And not only that, but since his order in the nearly month, actually it's been a month and two days, because today's the 15th, his order went into effect on the 13th of November, at least that's when he announced it. So it's been a month, and in that month, as I've pointed out on this show, cases have gone up and down. They've mostly been on a downward swing, but deaths have gone up. And we are on right on track to get more deaths than in October when there was no mandate whatsoever at all for anything. The same thing is going on in Michigan, where on Monday they reported 90 deaths and 7,205 new cases. These restrictions do not stop anything. And we know that because people are not getting COVID from the bars and the restaurants. As I have said on this show, even the mayor of El Paso, who is a far left liberal Democrat, said people are getting this when they're going shopping at big box stores. You know what's totally unfair? They go to the supermarket. They can go to these restaurants inside the supermarket those are not shut down inside walmart they they've got many of the walmarts have subways pizza huts stuff like that they are not being shut down they are not being limited the same way that regular stand apart restaurants are it is totally unfair and basically these small businesses are being shuttered or at least forced to go to such a small capacity they cannot survive Whereas these restaurants that are in these big box stores that are these chain restaurants, they're doing just fine. So this is favoring the rich businesses against the small businesses, which are the backbone of America and the backbone of North Dakota. And don't forget, farmers are small businesses, too. All the small businesses in North Dakota have to band together against the governor to stop this. So this is what's going on in Michigan. This woman, Amy Hyken, she's the owner of Cafe Rosetta in Calumet, Michigan. She is being fined $1,000 a day for still being open. Now, why is she open? She's a single mother of six. Now, listen, I don't want to chastise her for being a single mother. I don't know why she's a single mother. Her husband or whoever it was may have died. I have no idea. Maybe he left her. Maybe she did everything right. But we often find single mothers in these kinds of situations. And she has six kids as a single mother. That's not responsible behavior. But I'm not on her for that with regard to this. Because she could have been a non-mother. Or she could have been a married mother of six. Or she could be a mother of two kids who's married. She still would be in the same boat. She needs to support her family. And she is open, and she should have every right to be open. That's what's called freedom. She's being fined $1,000 a day. She's got 30 employees that she's paying. These people and their families rely on her. I'm sure some of them are single mothers as well. She is being fined. This is what's going on in Michigan. And meanwhile, as I said, Michigan has 90 deaths on Monday. They have... 7,205 new COVID cases. And I want to tell you how ridiculous this is. The governor of Michigan dug back. She found a law from 1945. So if my math is correct, that's 75 years ago, almost a century ago. She found a law. She used it to impose these draconian measures on businesses throughout Michigan. Businesses took her to court. It finally went to the Michigan Supreme Court. They ruled it was unconstitutional. That was the end of it. Businesses reopened. Guess what? She found some law from like 1918 or 1920. So 100 years ago, she found this law. I think maybe 1915. 
and she used the health department to issue these regulations when she is the health department. She appoints everybody to that. They do what she says, and she announces all these restrictions. So she is doing this. She dug back over a century, a century that has no relevance to today to shut down the single mother, to try to finding her a thousand dollars a day to keep her cafe open. This is an outrage. Like I said, when are we going to rise up? Now I want to tell you what Fargo is doing. And I gotta give a lot of credit to Fargo City Commissioners Dave Pepcorn and Tony Garrett. Now you'll remember Dave Pepcorn. We stood up for him because he is absolutely reasonable and on the money with regard to COVID. He said masks don't work at a city council meeting. Well what happened or a city commission meeting? What happened to him? He was attacked around the world, including by that has-been idiot. Uh, What is his name? Peter something. I can't even remember, but he is uh, Peter Frampton. Frampton comes alive, all right? Frampton apparently isn't alive because he's basically a walking zombie of the left. He attacked Dave Pepcorn, just very obnoxious. Dave Pepcorn was right. We've shown studies on this show, and we'll show more of them, how the masks don't really work, and they're not consistent, the types of masks you have to wear. Some of them don't work wear, work at all. So he and Dave, Tony Gehrig, they decided to offer some aid to bars and restaurants, and we will talk more about that after these messages on No Filter with Debbie on back. stuff everywhere. It's so embarrassing. Ruins the neighborhood. Come on, humans. Let's get this fixed. Don't let your roof go to the dogs. Call America's best contractors for your free estimate. Need a new woof? After checking with the rest, go with the best. America's best contractors. 258-2412. Online at americasbestcontractorsincorporated.com. In southwestern and south central North Dakota, on any given day at any given moment, a Dakota Community Bank and Trust customer is logging in or signing on to do their online or mobile banking. We believe that community banking can blend both the past with down-home customer service in-house and the future with modern banking conveniences and technology for our customers anywhere, like here or here, all while honoring our long-standing tradition of community-first oriented banking here at Dakota Community Bank and Trust. My wife was diagnosed with uh, early stage Alzheimer's. We talked about it and we kind of decided we'd be a little bit proactive and try to start making provisions. So we started looking here and uh, even Tide worked out to be pretty much the perfect answer. I guess I I didn't expect it to be so nice. The staff here were terrific. We enjoy it. They say, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. At OK Tire, we're here to keep you going. From Firestone tires and replacements to retreads and even Firestone tracks, we have you covered. Our certified Firestone experts are ready to get you back up and running, no matter if you're on site or in the field, saving you time and money. OK Tire, we keep the tough going. Now is the best time to plan for your 2021 farm equipment needs. North Dakota-based Summers Manufacturing is currently offering early order savings. Take advantage of big savings on North America's broadest tillage line, including the Super Colder Samurai and the innovative BRT Renegade, as well as the best-built, best-backed land rollers in the industry. Talk to your Summers dealer today or go to summersmfg.com to learn more about early order savings available on all Summers equipment.
Welcome back to No Filter with Debbie on Beck. So before the break, I was telling you that city commissioners in Fargo, Dave Pepcorn and Tony Gehrig, they have introduced this bill that passed that is going to at least go some of the way, not all of the way, to helping these businesses survive, These particularly the bars and restaurants, which are the most affected, I believe, in North Dakota although you could also argue hotels. So Dave Pepcorn and Tony Gehrig, what they did was they set up this business assistance program. It is $1.1 million in assistance. But before you hear the price tag, just know that it's not coming from tax dollars. What is going to happen is just taxes won't be collected on these businesses. So the next six months of utility charges will be waived and the bars and restaurants will be given a rebate to cover their food and alcohol license fees for 2021, 2021, and also uh, some other things. But those are the biggest ones. Now, the CEO and president of the Fargo-Moorhead Convention and Visitors Bureau has a good point. He said he believes that restaurants and bars do need help, but he also doesn't want to play favorites because he said, Hotels need help. He said there are many other industries that are suffering, hotels, retail, and attractions. Attractions for sure. So what if these restrictions are so harsh on these businesses and so bad that a bunch of those people who are among our stakeholders, they don't come out on the other end and don't survive? And he said that there have already been some hotels that have gone out of business. And that is true. So listen, I give them a lot of credit for doing what they can. There really needs to be more federal aid and frankly, state aid. The governor has put these restrictions on. The Republicans, I don't know what they can do in the state legislature. Maybe we will have somebody on to address that, but maybe they can do something to override him. I hope there are going to be some lawsuits. I'll bet there already are against the governor for this. I believe there are, and I think in the past, Those lawsuits have unfortunately not been successful. But the governor, this is his baby, these restrictions. He's putting these establishments out of business with these restrictions, sending the police to to enforce them. And I think he should be forced to raise taxes and to get aid for these businesses so that then he can face the music from all the North Dakota taxpayers, not just these business owners. And then maybe he will stop doing this. He seems to be very good at responding when there is a lot of protest. We've seen that many times since the beginning of the pandemic. When he goes too far, people rise up. They protest, they send letters, and he changes his mind and goes backwards. We need to get him to do that on this very fast because these businesses, many of them are not going to survive. It's very sad. All right, so... That's that. Now let's get on to something more happy and cheerful. It is the holiday season after all. We're almost at Christmas. You, I told you about this story, I think, last week. There was this kid. He went to a mall. He went to the Santa. The Santa was one of these politically correct liberals who doesn't know that it's your job to be Santa. Listen to the kids. Tell them they'll get what they want if it's not too outlandish or give them some non-committal answer. And that's it. Smile at them and let them be on their way. Don't put in your gun control politics, your left-wing nut job, jobbiness. Nobody wants to hear it, much less a little kid who has no idea about this, just wants a toy. And this Santa at this mall did that, and this kid wanted a Nerf gun. He said, no, no guns. And his mother said, Nerf gun. And he said, no Nerf guns either. I'm against that. No, no violent weapons, no weapons. So you know what? No guns. This kid cried. But you know what? The NRA came to the rescue. And this Santa, his plan backfired on him because this became a national story. He, lo- he had to resign. So he lost his job. Listen, I don't like people losing their job. But you know what? There's plenty of people that would love to pay, play Santa that need the money. And he just didn't know his place. So look what the NRA did. Watch this. Me and Santa didn't want to give me a Nerf gun for Christmas. No, no guns. Nerf gun. No, not even a Nerf gun. It's okay.
The North Pole doesn't need any commies. Santa's job is to make kids believe in the magic of Christmas, not lecture us on politics. I'm so grateful for all of the people who reached out and sent Nerf guns to Michael. Americans of all backgrounds came together and rallied for my son. We have received hundreds of Nerf guns, and Michael will be distributing those to other little patriots in need. I'm a police officer, NRA instructor, and a lifetime member of the National Rifle Association. And I gotta tell you, when the NRA reached out to us, we were shocked. Fellow Patriots, thank you for all that you do to protect our rights and support us police officers. And NRA, thank you for making my family's Christmas one we will never forget. And I'm proud to say Michael Jr. is now a lifetime member of the National Rifle Association of America. We're the DiCarlo family. And we're proud members of the National Rifle Association. Merry Christmas! I love that. Everything about that is great. My favorite part is when he does the snow angel and the wrapping paper. But look at they turned something. They basically turned lemon into lemonade. And this politically correct Santa, everything he did backfired on him. Because now the NRA turned this into a commercial. And this kid is going to have the best Christmas ever. And now he's a lifetime member of the NRA. And now all of these kids who don't have gifts are going to get those Nerf guns. And it showed the generosity of Americans. That Americans will band together. Look at how many guns, how many Nerf guns this kid was sent. I just love this story. And not only that, but his father being a police officer. And th that aspect of this being in there, I just, listen, guns, there's nothing wrong with guns. Guns are neutral. We need guns to protect ourselves. I myself am a single woman without a gun. What's going to protect me against intruders? Guns are the ultimate equalizer. There's nothing wrong with them. That sent Santa sent the wrong message. Again, I'm sorry he lost his job. He was wrong to do that. Hopefully he learned his lesson and won't insert politics into his job again. Santa should not be political. All right, when we come back, we'll get into some national politics, some North D Dakota stories, that and more after these messages on No Filter with Debbie on back. Howdy folks, it's the Caroline Cafe. I reckon it's time you're due for a hearty meal. So saddle up for the day with one of our hay boss and breakfast yeah. homemade soups. Fill your grill at our salad bar, sink your teeth into our famous Caroline burger and barbecue ribs. Mm -hmm. Top it off with spur rattling pie with a calm roll that's sure to put a smile on even the toughest outlaws. Yeah. Shake the dirt off the boots each night and warm up with the game. Tell them about it, Stacy. I can't wait to see you at the county line. Since opening in Hebron in 1940, Dakota Community Bank and Trust has been your hometown bank. Our mission has been to provide modern banking convenience with old-fashioned hometown service. We've grown with the communities we serve. Through year-round events, countless sponsorships, and nearly 7,000 hours of volunteering each year. Learn more about our 80-year history at dakotacommunitybank.com. Jeez, what a mess. Look at that. There's roof stuff everywhere. It's so embarrassing. Ruins the neighborhood. Come on, humans. Let's get this fixed. Don't let your roof go to the dogs. Call America's best contractors for your free estimate. Need a new woof? After checking with the rest, go with the best. America's best contractors. 258-2412. Online at americasbestcontractorsincorporated.com. For the greatest selection and full menu offering is the Four Season Restaurant and Ice Cream Parlor in Garrison. Succulent sandwiches, big breakfasts served all day, and delicious desserts. Easy access in and out for campers and RVs. The Four Season Restaurant at the top of Main Street, Garrison.
Are you a thrill seeker, sightseer, or day tripper? The Ford Bronco Sport SUV is built for you. Four Bears Casino is giving away a 2021 Ford Bronco Sport loaded with a ton of interior space, safari style roof, smooth suspension for any terrain, and easy to clean surfaces. Qualify now just by playing your favorite slots at Four Bears Casino. Double points on Sundays. Also get in on Super Senior Wednesdays, slot turning Thursdays, and hot seats on Wednesdays and Thursdays. Spin into Four Bears Casino and Lodge for chances to win. Some things in life are hard. That's why banking shouldn't be. Cornerstone Bank. Welcome back to No Filter with Debbie on Beck. So over the weekend, the president went to one of the traditions every year of football season, but very few presidents have gone to these games. President George W. Bush went, and somebody, I believe maybe President Teddy Roosevelt went. I believe this was the big Army-Navy game. If it was not, it was a game between two of our military academies. And I just want you to, to show you a short video. As you watch it, Think, compare how these people react to the president versus Joe Biden. They're fist bumping the president. They love seeing him. Do you think they're going to love seeing Joe Biden or worse, Kamala Harris? Think again. It's just not going to happen. They don't have that feeling for these people. They know that these people don't have respect for the military. Yes, I know that Bo Biden, Joe Biden's son was in the military. He'll tell us that from here until the cows come home. But I'm sorry. He and Obama defunded the military. They made them less well-armed. They cut their salaries. They cut the number of personnel. They're just not pro-military. And Kamala Harris, well, she's the most far-left senator, even more far-left than Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders. So what does that tell you about her views on the military? Now, we've been hearing a lot about when is President Trump going to concede? He needs to concede. And I pointed out on this show many times over the last few months, uh, last month and a half since the election, that Stacey Abrams still has not conceded. Stacey Abrams in Georgia. Well, now there's somebody else. In Iowa, there is Rita Hart. So Rita Hart was a Democrat uh, candidate for Congress. She lost. Now, I'll give her this. She lost by five votes. She still will not concede her election. I have one up on her. I ran for the Michigan House of Representatives in 1990, and I lost by just one vote. You know, we found votes that should have counted for me that weren't, and there was a corrupt judge that figured into the mix. There was a lot that went on, and I did go to court over this, and at some point, that was it. I moved on, but I went through the process. This woman, Rita Hart, she is not going to court because she knows she'll lose. She lost by five votes. She can't find any more votes to cover those five, to make up for it, to put her over the top. So she's not going to court. She said she's going to have Nancy Pelosi decide it because that's where she'll get the result that she wants. Yeah, that's how we do this. We get the result we want. So that you know what? This woman is much worse than what they are saying President Trump is doing, and yet nobody's calling for her to concede. She's a liberal Democrat, and nobody cares. If her name was Trump and she had an R after her name, well, then it would be a different story. See, they are hypocrites. They don't care about concessions. They didn't with Stacey Abrams, who two, two years later still hasn't conceded to Georgia Governor Brian Kemp, and they don't care that this woman still hasn't conceded either. And you know what? I'm going to go there. I'm going to say this. That is sexist. These two are women. Nobody's calling for their concessions. Trump's a male, and yet he's the one they're attacking. So there's that. Now, in Michigan, there is this Republican congressman, Paul Mitchell. He's a congressman in Washington. 
And there's a big story all over the news that he has left the Republican Party. Let me just tell you a little bit about this drama queen, Paul Mitchell. First of all, he's a multimillionaire. He's kind of a rhino. He endorsed uh, a anchor baby, the son of illegal aliens, for Congress to replace him and said that that guy was a conservative, even though that guy was not for secure borders. That person was beaten by a real conservative by the name of Lisa McLean. She's going to be the next congresswoman from this seat. So Paul Mitchell asked that they change his party affiliation to independent. For what? Today is December 15th. They're leaving for Christmas. They're supposed to leave at the end of the week. So that's why he's having them change it for a couple of days. That's symbolic. He's just a drama queen. That's a virtue signaling stunt. He's retiring. So. The whole reason, by the way, that he is switching from the Republican Party or leaving is because he does not like that President Trump still hasn't conceded. And again, I ask, well, did you say that you were upset about Stacey Abrams or this new woman, Ms. Hart? Of course not. So we don't need your drama queen behavior. Just go. Just go. Have a classy exit, all right? You want Trump to have a classy exit? You have a classy exit. Yesterday, Michigan electors voted just like the North Dakota electors met to be, to vote. By the way, North Dakota, all three electors, as presided over by the Fuhrer Doug Burgum, they voted for President Trump. Good for them. I support that. Look what happened in Michigan before they voted. Look at this. Now, please remain standing for the national anthem and the black national anthem by the Turner sisters. Jalea and Jamila Turner. Lift every voice and sing. Yeah, so Jalea and Jamila sang what apparently is the real national anthem first, the black national anthem, at the Michigan House. What is this? Before the electors vote, you're singing the black national anthem. What is the message here? The NFL did this, too, for one of their first games of the season. We are not a black country. We are just a country. We are a country of many races, many ethnicities. Where is the Jewish national anthem, the Polish national anthem, the Arabic national anthem, the Mexican national anthem? The You name it. I mean, I am 100% Polish Jewish. All four of my grandparents were born in Poland, all Jews. So... Where are our two, two anthems? I mean, it's just absurd. I have only one national anthem. It's the national anthem. And that's all that should be sung at these events. And why is this one first? It just drives me nuts. So there's that. Now, speaking of electors, well, they were very clever, these Democrats, about who they picked as electors. They picked Stacey Abrams in Georgia to announce the results. That was symbolic. And guess who is back as an elector? Well, her name, I'll give you a hint. Her first name is Hillary. Her last name is Clinton. So Hillary Clinton voted, cast an electoral vote, and she said that she's against the Electoral College, of course, because she won the popular vote, but she lost by what really counts, which is the Electoral College. Nobody cares about the popular vote. Them's not the rules, all right? So she said that she was proud to cast her vote in New York for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, even though I believe we should abolish the Electoral College and select our president by the winner of the popular vote. Then she also said it felt pretty poetic. So in other words, the poetic justice of seeing Hillary Clinton, the popular vote winner, who was also denied her presidency, cast her electoral vote. She wanted everybody to say, oh, it's poetic justice. So She said, I felt poetic. You know what? You're still not president. You still will never be president. You know what? The reason she's not president is because she's Hillary Clinton and people didn't want her. She's jealous of Joe Biden. She's jealous of Kamala Harris. Too bad. I'd love to see these inner fights that you know are going on in her head and in their heads. You just know it. You know it. All right. Now, before we go to the break, I'll just mention this. Joe Biden picked Pete Buttigieg as Secretary of Transportation. Now, this is a guy that presided over as mayor, South Bend, Indiana. This is a small town. as It's like a mid-sized city, as cities go. It's just a little over 100,000 people. So now he's going to run a huge department. He's got no experience doing that. 
the only reason he was even looked at as a presidential candidate still was one of the first to drop out out of 22 candidates and the only reason he's getting this is because he's gay this is more identity politics we're hiring people joe biden's hiring people based on whether they worked for the obama administration what color they are and who they're sleeping with very sad all right when we come back We'll do some more politics, some North Dakota topics, and why I'm mad at the CEO of Apple. Why I'm, uh, It troubles me. That and more after these messages on No Filter with Debbie on back. Howdy, folks. It's the Caroline Cafe. I reckon it's time you'll do for a hearty meal. So saddle up for the day with one of our hay boss and breakfast yeah. homemade soups. Fill your grill at a salad bar. Sink your teeth into our famous Caroline burger and barbecue ribs. Mm-hmm. Top it off with spur rattling pie with a calm roll that's sure to put a smile on even the toughest outlaws. Yeah. Shake the dirt off the boots each night and warm up with the game. Tell them about it, Stacy. I can't wait to see you at the county line. Hi, I'm Dennis Haugen, along with my sons Andy and Mike, and we're showing our support for wind energy in North Dakota. Wind energy has provided farmers like us with a steady stream of income that's not tied to the weather, like crops and cattle are. Another bonus is that wind farm owners are required to maintain the roads leading up to the turbines. Because of that, oftentimes these roads are the best in the county. Wind energy is good for landowners, it's good for the land, it's good for our economy, and it's good for North Dakota. Capital City Restaurant Supply is your one-stop shop for quality restaurant products for the large to small kitchens. Commercial grade restaurant and bar supplies, limb game processing equipment, refrigeration, dinnerware, and smallware. We sell everything including the kitchen sink from trusted manufacturers for the chef and all of us. Open to the public since 1971, we are veteran owned and North Dakota proud. Let us take care of your restaurant and home kitchen needs today by visiting us at 1414 Interstate Loop in Bismarck or on the web at CapitalCityRestaurantSupply.com. My wife was diagnosed with uh, early stage Alzheimer's. We talked about it and we kind of decided we'd be a little bit proactive and try to start making provisions. So we started looking here and uh, even title worked out to be pretty much the perfect answer. I guess I, I didn't expect it to be so nice. The staff here were terrific. We enjoy it. They say, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. At OK Tire, we're here to keep you going. From Firestone tires and replacements to retreads and even Firestone tracks, we have you covered. Our certified Firestone experts are ready to get you back up and running, no matter if you're on site or in the field, saving you time and money. OK Tire, we keep the tough going. Now is the best time to plan for your 2021 farm equipment needs. North Dakota-based Summers Manufacturing is currently offering early order savings. Take advantage of big savings on North America's broadest tillage line, including the Super Colder Samurai and the innovative BRT Renegade, as well as the best-built, best-backed land rollers in the industry. Talk to your Summers dealer today or go to summersmfg.com to learn more about early order savings available on all Summers equipment. Welcome back to No Filter with Debbie on back. So yesterday, or I guess it's this morning, Bill Barr, the attorney general, resigned. And you know what? At some point, President Trump, I supported him. I still support him. I agree with a lot of his policies. He did a great job with America, but he's a very difficult person. He does not side with the people who do what they're supposed to do and who've been loyal. And I think Bill Barr has been very very loyal now he's mad that bill barr did a couple of things he didn't like one that he said there was no major election fraud that he saw and number two that he kept quiet that he was investigating bo biden but that's what you're supposed to do when you're the attorney general i think he had trump's back i think he did a great job but you know what's he losing out of it we're on december 15th he's gonna have to leave by january 20th the morning anyway so You know what? A lot of people are leaving. People have to move on. Sometimes you have to move on from somebody that is 
personally dislikable and hard to deal with. Listen, I support the president. I just don't think I'd be hanging out with him at the bar having a beer. Just saying. All right, now, other news that people are using, especially the mainstream media, to say COVID is very, very serious, and it is for older people or people with comorbidities, is this guy named, I think his name is pronounced Creed or Craid Bailey. He is director of the White House Security Office, meaning he works with the Secret Service on security issues, and he also is involved in credentialing visitors and the press and so on. So he had COVID, a very, very bad bout, and he lost his right foot. He lost a toe on his left foot. He lost part of his right leg because of COVID and complications from it. That's very, very serious, and my heart is with him. And that is really something horrible to go through. We all know that. But this is not the case for most people. This is not typical. This is atypical. And I looked him up. He's 54 years old, so not that old, but he is over 50. That makes him in the higher risk category. The other thing is that he looked to be overweight. And we know that obesity and being overweight is a comorbidity. Still, you know, nobody deserves this, and I feel so sorry for him, and my prayers are with him, but this is just not typical. So I I wish people would stop using this to say this is what happens with COVID, because in most cases, very, very few does something like this happen. In most cases, people get better and nothing like this happens. Now, there is a GoFundMe page for this man, Creed Bailey. His name is spelled C-R-E-D-E, Bailey how you think it was pronounced, I urge you to contribute. I'm sure he's going to have a lot of needs with this new disability, and our prayers are with him again. Now, on to some North Dakota stuff, because I think this is very important, and it couldn't have come at a better time. I love this judge. Judge Cynthia Feeland, I think that's how you pronounce her name. She is the South Central District Judge of North Dakota, She ruled that the state's Department of Health overstepped its authority when it made rules that restricted homemade foods that can be offered for sale. This could not have come soon enough because people who lose their jobs, a lot of times, especially if they're women, they will bake things at home to make some money because they can't find a new job or to cover some extra expenses, or in this case, just to make ends meet. And these laws really were hard on North Dakotans in normal times. Now, in COVID, they're much more uh, encroaching and impinging upon people's freedom and their ability to survive. So five North Dakota plaintiffs sued the the state in March, arguing that the rules should be overturned because of a conflict with a 2017 law that expanded cottage food sales like that. And the health officials of the state, of course, like Renee Mock and people like that, although I think she uh, maybe was not associated with this. I don't know. But they said they're disappointed with the ruling. They wanted the lawsuit dismissed. Good. I'm glad they lost. I'm glad that they were on the losing side on this. We need to survive. And these kinds of things are absolutely necessary. Now, North Dakota COVID numbers. This is more evidence that the governor's mass mandates and other mandates Shutting down businesses, limiting capacity are not working. So today, I told you yesterday there were only six deaths. Today, there were a lot more. There were 13 deaths. So it's going up. We are on track for probably more than 300, too, that I had earlier estimated. So most of the people who died were in their 70s, 80s, and 90s. There are two people in their 60s. Everybody else was 70s, 80s, and 90s. And again, North Dakota won't tell us if they have comorbidities anymore. They won't tell us. Why? Because probably all of these people have those. So the governor's mandate's not working. Yes, the cases are going down. But the deaths have gone up. Now, this is a story why, that I think is very, very important. Apple CEO Tim Cook. This is why I'm upset with him. All right. So there used to be this website called Gawker. I don't know if it's still around, but I know that the original owners were basically put out of business by lawsuits and so on. But Gawker was a gossip website. They outed Tim Cook as being gay several years ago. And he found out that Apple TV was making a TV show about Gawker. And he 
nixed it. He put the kibosh on it because Gawker had outed him. And this just goes to show that this goes on all the time in Hollywood. It goes all the time on all the time in news organizations. But it goes to show how biased it is and what they covered. They're not going to cover this story because he has a personal axe to grind against this website. So that's why you're not going to see it. We saw this many, many times in the 70s, 80s, and 90s when Rune Arledge, then the president of ABC News, would not let them cover the uh, affairs of the Kennedy brothers and how they jeopardized national security with that. Why? Because Rune Arledge was friends with Ethel Kennedy, Robert F. Kennedy, Robert Kennedy's widow. They censor because of their friends, their connections, and their own personal biases. Finally, Deborah Messing. This woman blocked me on Twitter. She attacked me, and I insulted her back. She couldn't handle it. Well, now she's against Donald Trump. She said that she hopes he lives a long life in prison and gets raped basically by a and becomes the most popular boyfriend to all inmates. So there's been a backlash. So now she backtracked, not not apologizing that she hopes the president gets raped. No, that she feels like she degraded and denigrated gay love. So she's apologizing for that and for but not for the rape or anything else. Disgusting woman. Remember, things are not always as they seem. See you tomorrow.